so uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Shai uh, from uh, uh, IBM. I work at uh, the HIFA Research Lab um, uh, on information retrieval um, uh, stuff. I work with Lucene uh, for about seven years, uh, developing uh, all sorts of uh, extensions and uh, improvements. I'm a committer um, in a project. I blog often, probably not as much as I should have. Um, and uh, feel free to reach me out um, either on the mailing list or in this email address. Um, so um, <clears throat> today I'll uh, introduce the new uh, facets module. Well, it's not really new, but um, uh, the facets module that Lucene uh, has. Uh, just a quick um, uh, question: Does anyone use the, the facet module here um, from from Lucene? No. Okay. So maybe after the talk you will. Um, okay, so I'll start with, uh, I divided the talk into two, uh, an introduction of, uh, of the module and its capabilities, and then if time permits, uh, I will go uh, open up the hood and let's see what's, uh, what's underneath. Um, <clears throat> so first let's uh, get everybody on the same page. Um, what is faceted search? So I believe everybody knows what faceted search is. Uh, if you look at uh, Wikipedia, it's a, a technique for accessing documents that were classified into a taxonomy of categories. Um, and you can think about categories being flat, for example, an author category, uh, or uh, fully hierarchical categories. So uh, if you look up uh, Apache Lucene in the Open Directory project, which is uh, a project uh, about classification of web pages, um, uh, into into a taxonomy, then it falls under this category, and you see it's uh, about five or six levels deep uh, in there. Um, <coughs> faceted search uh, is a very useful technique for helping users browse uh, results. It first of all, um, it gives users a nice breakdown of the results. So by looking at the results page, as you see here uh, in the picture. Um, you get uh, a very quick overview of what you're about to see, like this result set. Uh, by the way, this is a, a search application written by Mike McCandles uh, that indexes our uh, JIRA issues, uh, both Lucene and Solos, and it's kind of a eat our own dog food um, uh, sort of application. It uses the latest suggestions, um, the latest facets improvements, and whatever. Um, so if you, if you just look at this uh, UI, then you already know that there are uh, so-and-so issues that are closed or open, how many issues uh, under the solar branch or under the Lucene branch um, you have. So as a user, you get a very quick overview of what's going on. And second, um, it helps the user navigate the results because users, uh, we uh, mask away from them the, the, the exact syntax uh, of the search query. Uh, for example, if you want to, f uh, to narrow down to the uh, issues that were updated in the past two days, then the user doesn't need to know how to construct a range query and whether you're going to use a millisecond uh, granularity or some other uh, stuff. Um, and also, um, it masks away the, the way the, in the index uh, schema looks like. So is it a status field with a capital S, a lower S? Uh, it's, is it called stat or underscore stat? So users don't care about it. But facets have um, uh, other, um, they, they can give users uh, other valuable information that is usually not depicted in the in classic uh, faceted search user interfaces. And that's about um, giving users insights into the, the results. So if you think about a log search application um, where you have billions of records that might match some criteria, nobody's really interested in looking at each individual record and. Uh, seeing what's in there, rather users want to get an overview, uh, like a, a dashboard, um, and get a quick breakdown of how many, um, uh, which areas in my network are currently exposed to security attacks, or uh, are there any um, areas in my network that are uh, down, or is, a, is, a, is there a router that is um, uh, surfacing more, uh, too many uh, errors uh, that I need to go uh, and, and look at, and uh, through facets, you can get uh, this kind of insights and build um, other analytics application uh, on top. And if you attended uh, the first talk uh, by Michael Bush about Twitter, then he mentioned that under the covers, they are using some sort of a faceted search technology 
to uh, help uh, boost up documents and surface uh, tweets that are more, more relevant uh, to you. So that's a uh, faceted search. Um, so let's uh, um, uh, meet Lucene facets. Um, we developed it in IBM for uh, several years and contributed it about two years ago. Uh, it was first released in 3.4 uh, and then uh, uh, it just lay there in SVN. Uh, we've got some users uh, first asking questions, but then around uh, a year ago, Mike McCandless and I started to play with, uh, with the module some more and benchmark it. Um, and since 4.1, the, um, the module has seen uh, substantial improvements. So first of all, it was almost entirely rewritten from the higher level APIs to the lower level implementations. Um, we, uh, we've added NRT support, um, um, almost 4x uh, improvements at search uh, speed ups, as you can see in the graph here. Um, we cut over the lower level implementation from a terms payload to a doc values, which are much faster and can be loaded into memory. Um, and uh, we also added new features, um, for example, sorted set. So if you're familiar with uh, Solar, there is a sorted set faceting method. It's relatively new, I think. Um, so Lucene Facets also has uh, such a method. Uh, range faceting, um, which is um, uh, this uh, updated in past two days, past day widget that you've seen before. Uh, drill sideways, which I'll uh, explain to. Um, now, when you work with the facets module, then you need to make uh, indexing time decisions. So uh, you need to decide which are the facets uh, up front, um, because that allows us to uh, to encode stuff more efficiently, so that faceted search is actually very fast. Uh, and there are two modes um, uh, when working with this module. One of them is called a taxonomy-based mode, where we keep a sidecar index that manages the taxonomy, um, and um, uh, it's completely hierarchical. It's uh, managed by a sidecar index. It's fully NRT and it has a lower, uh, very low NRT cost uh, uh, when reopening uh, your readers. Uh, the second uh, mode is when you work with uh, sorted set dog values, which is very similar to what Sora does. Um, it's, uh, uh, it currently supports only flat facets. It has uh, some highish uh, NRT reopen cost but it carries no sidecar index, so uh, if for some reason you're afraid of managing two data structures, then you might want to pick that one. Uh, and there are some uh, runtime modes, so I said that you need to make indexing time decisions, but for some uh, fields, uh, you can decide at runtime if you want to facet by them. So for example, if you're indexing a last modification date uh, numeric dog values field, then you can uh, have uh, range faceting on that field without actually uh, deciding in time, at indexing time that you will want to do that. Now, um, as I already said, Solar has faceted search, Elasticsearch has faceted search, there is a project called Bobo Browse which has faceted search, so faceted search exists, we didn't implement anything new, uh, and I'm not going to uh, uh, compare this module to all the other implementations, I just want you to be aware of that this is not the only implementation out there. Um, okay, so the facets module um, uh, contains uh, several high-level components that you will want to uh, um, to use uh, in order to index facets. Uh, so very similarly to index writer and index reader, we have a taxonomy writer and a taxonomy reader that is only applicable if you're going to use the taxonomy-based approach. Um, and it manages the taxonomy uh, for you. Um, uh, a facet fields object is uh, one that adds the uh, relevant faceting information to documents because there is no facet field in Lucene um, because we add ma multiple fields to the documents, uh, both drill down terms, which are posting lists, and uh, doc values fields uh, uh, for doing the aggregation. Facet request is an object that uh, um, is responsible for uh, um, describing what to facet on. So you say, I want to facet on the author field, for example, uh, and I want to get a top K or top 10 uh, authors that um, are associated with this result set. It is also responsible for doing aggregation. So by aggregation, I meaning the function that you uh, execute or compute on the, uh, the matching documents. Now, count is the most common function. Therefore, we have uh, specific optimiz optimized implementations for counting facets, but this is not the only function that you can compute on facets. 
and I'll go into that later. Uh, facets collector is your search entry level object. It's just a Lucene collector which uh, you feed into index searcher and then you get the facet results back and you, uh, you get uh, the, the top facets computed for you. Uh, now drill down query and drill sideways, I will go into uh, uh, more detail in, uh, in a minute. Okay, so uh, I know that I'm not supposed to show you code examples uh, during this, uh, these talks, but this is here uh, so that you can look, uh, look them up uh, later. But just very quickly, um, here are the objects that I mentioned, the taxonomy writer. Uh, to index facet, you set up a taxonomy writer, a facet fields, then you add uh, a category path which describes a category um, uh, and you can see it can be uh, with uh, it can be hierarchical uh, and uh, you just add it to documents and you index the documents so really no uh, no big deal here and uh, you will I don't know if you are if you managed to read it but this is uh, about indexing the Lucinian action book the first edition of, of the book okay so we have the, the title field I'll use that example later. We have a title field and then I add all the authors and the publication date as facets. Uh, during search, uh, I want to, uh, to search on title Lucene. So that's here. I want to search on title Lucene and I want to count uh, the author and the publication date facets. So this is how you would uh, express this request. You create two facet requests, two count facet requests. Uh, on the author and publication date dimensions, you will execute a query uh, title Lucene and you pass a facet collector to uh, index searcher. And uh, because the uh, facets are fully hierarchical, what you get in a facet result is a, is a hierarchy back. So this is how you would traverse the result uh, in order to build up uh, those widgets to your users. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, drill down and drill sideways. Uh, a drill down is when a user clicks on, on a facet. Okay, so if I, uh, if you look uh, on the right, uh, there is a component facet uh, with a hierarchy such as uh, core slash index and core slash search, etc. Um, and this is, uh, by the way, related to the app. These uh, are the components uh, on which we have uh, issues open or closed. Okay, so um, I, as a user, I search for something and now I want to filter down to all uh, issues that are related to the component uh, core slash index. So I click on index and um, um, what happens is that the, the, it adds a filter to the query so that I now get only results that uh, are associated with that category. Uh, now drill down query can receive multiple, uh, as you can see in this uh, example, it can receive multiple Category so that uh, I want to filter on uh, documents that are issues that are associated with either the index or the search uh, uh, component. Now, the problem with drill down is that, uh, especially if you have a single valued uh, facets, is that as soon as the user clicked on, uh, on the index component, uh, then by definition, only the results that belong to the index component come back. So what happens is that the rest of the categories are zeroed out because uh, no other document matches the query now. So if you are exploring this uh, result set um, and you say, I want to filter down to categories, uh, to documents that are associated with the index component, but maybe I'm not going to find my, uh, the issue that I'm looking for there, and you now want to, uh, to switch back to the search uh, component, you have to do two operations. First of all, you have to do some sort of a back operation, whether it's a browser's back button or I don't know, clicking an X somewhere to undo the filtering, uh, which in turn executes another query to, uh, to bring back the original result, and then click on the search, so in, uh, on the search uh, component, which means that you need to do two, uh, two operations uh, to get it. But Drill Sideways is a relatively new feature, and you can read how it's implemented in this uh, blog post. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's quite cool. What, what it does is that it uh, counts uh, sort of one off. So instead of uh, uh, filtering down to uh, uh, core slash index, it says I'm going to filter down to core slash index, but I want to, um, uh, uh, to count all the categories that are without that filter. Uh, if you attended uh, the previous talk with the min should match, that's uh, what it does. It says I'm going to take the query, add a filter, 
but um, the query should match um, n minus one clauses so that without the filter, I um, I can count the the, the rest of uh, of the categories, uh, which gives you this nice UI. So you can see that even though I clicked on index, search, and codex, I can still within one click. Uh, filter down to a different uh, component. Um, dynamic facet is uh, is my name for uh, not having to decide upfront that I'm going to facet on this uh, on this field, and we are currently uh, we currently support uh, numeric doc values, and in uh, 4.6 we'll also we extended the the, uh, the accumulation code to support any value source. Uh, this is uh, your way of saying I have a numeric dog values field in this example, which is uh, uh, last updated, and I want to uh, to uh, bucket or I want to create some buckets and associate the, the documents into the buckets, and so I know how many documents were updated in the past day and how many were updated in the past two days. Now, value source, if you're familiar with it. Um, takes this a little bit further and now you can compute an expression if you know uh, there is a new expression module in Lucene so you now can compute an expression over your lat long fields uh, and uh, for example have a, a widget like that that says how many uh, documents are in the area within five kilometers from where I, I am um, and how many within 10 kilometers okay so the value source lets you um, work either on a numeric dog values field or uh, on, a, on an arbitrary expression. Uh, now, a little bit about facet association. So I will start by saying that not all facets are created equal. And I said that um, um, count is not the only aggregation function that, um, that you could uh, uh, do. So think about an automatic categorization system, which you run documents by it, and it assigns categories to your documents uh, because it classifies something or I don't know and uh, usually those systems they they would tell you that this document is associated with Apache Lucene or with Apache Solar or maybe with Apache Hadoop and it would give you a confidence level uh, to each category and um, and you don't want to miss anything so you decide that you uh, everything that is above a threshold let's say with 0 0.6 you associate with a document um, and now if you ignore the um, the confidence level, and you only count the fact that the category was uh, associated with the document or not, so it's a Boolean decision, then what happens is that your uh, results, uh, the, the top K uh, facets might be wrong. Because let's say that Apache Lucene is, uh, is really a bad category. Uh, and it's, it is associated with 50% of the documents, but with very low confidence level. And you just ignore the confidence level, then suddenly Apache Lucene becomes uh, the most important category in the result set. Now, I, I was telling you first uh, that the facets not, uh, are not only used for uh, allowing users to navigate the result set, they should only give the, also give the users some insight about the result set. So what will the user understand? That Apache Lucene is a very important category, which in fact it isn't. Um, so if you uh, saved um, this value alongside each category, uh, and you summed over the, the confidence level, then maybe another category which is associated in practice in, with fewer documents but has higher confidence levels uh, is now more interesting to, for users to, to look at. Uh, another example is if you're building an application which searches for products and for each product you uh, have a contracts facet uh, which says uh, uh, in which countries the, this product uh, has been sold uh, sold and uh, uh, if you ag again uh, if you just take it as a bin as a binary decision uh, sold or not sold then you can get insights up to a, s a certain level but if you uh, if it's important to you you can associate how many uh, dollars were uh, generated from contracts within those country the, uh, countries and so now when you get your uh, top K facets back. Um, you can sum over the, this uh, generated revenue and say even though uh, the contracts in the US are appearing 90% uh, of the documents, those that were sold, I don't know, in Dublin um, generated much more revenue and therefore they are, they are more important for whoever looks at, uh, at, his, at the user interface now. 
And uh, facet associations are uh, completely uh, abstract. Uh, they are just byte arrays. Uh, you can encode whatever you want in them. We utilize them in, uh, in uh, some applications where we uh, index a lot of metadata, uh, sometimes about a facet, to take all of that into account. So maybe you are building a, a system that uh, uh, surfaces the most important users uh, now for this result set, like um, in the UI before you saw um, uh, who were the people that commented on, on the issues. Uh, now again, maybe, uh, maybe there is a user that um, uh, comments always, cool, 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 that is his only comment. So is it really interesting to see him in the results at all? Uh, as, as an interesting people, or you would like to uh, associate some metadata with the, with each user uh, in each facet and aggregate over that. Um, so facet associations is really about taking facets up to uh, to the next level and generating uh, business intelligence sort of applications, whether um, the regular type of facets are to show, uh, I call them, the, call them the, the e-commerce facets. You just want to see how many documents are how many results are uh, associated with which category. Um, okay, there are more features um, in, in the module than I would like to, uh, to go into uh, uh, in depth in this talk. Uh, I will just mention them briefly. Uh, one of them is called complements counting. And um, you can think uh, if you have overview queries, like your user logs in, uh, and he sees the most newest stuff, or um, without the query, what we call in Lucene the query uh, star, which uh, match all docs, uh, then it's, uh, it's very expensive to compute the query. Now you can maybe cache the query, um, the results as well as the top facets. Uh, but what if that query is uh, personalized? So whenever each user goes into the system, uh, he runs a different query, uh, a different overview query, uh, which, uh, which still matches a large number of documents, but it cannot be cached because it's a per user uh, query. Uh, so what we do with complements, and I believe it's also uh, available in Solo, we count the, um, the complement set. So if the, if, if the query matches more than 50% of the documents, so our, for performance reasons, we just count the complement set, which by definition we're doing less work and uh, the query returns uh, faster. Um, <clears throat> now, the complements counting can only be done for uh, functions that, like counting, uh, that you can compute a total count for each facet and then subtract. But if your, uh, if your function is not like a count function, then uh, you cannot uh, use it. Uh, sampling is, uh, is very relevant to when you are uh, really searching over billions of documents. Uh, the cost of doing faceted search is, uh, is the cost of the number of results that match the query. Um, that is also the cost of uh, computing the top K documents. Um, so by sampling, uh, I mean that um, you can compute the top K facets on a sample set of documents. Okay, so uh, if the query matches uh, 100 million documents, it's going to be very costly to, to, to do facet counting, uh, no matter in which uh, system you, you're going to do that, because it's just a lot of work to do. But if you decide that you are uh, willing to do faceted search on 1% or 10% of the, of the result set and say, I'm not going to display you counts like 1,200,032 because that's also not, ve not very valuable to a user, uh, I'm going to show you 82%. That, that will be the count that I will show you. Uh, then I can sample the set um, and get back an approximation of the top K. Um, and then uh, we allow you to do uh, uh, exact recounting of those top K. So if for some reason uh, on these huge result sets you, you really want to, to display someone uh, a very big number and an accurate number, then after we sampled the exact, uh, the, after we uh, computed the approximated top K, you can uh, go and count those, uh, only those K categories uh, so that you can get exact counts. Uh, partitions is another optimization for those who manage very large taxonomies, and by very large I mean taxonomies with uh, tens of millions of nodes. Um, I don't think that uh, there are many people here that uh, will have this taxonomy. Uh, it's a very rare case, but in this, in this case what you will want to do, uh, you will want to partition the taxonomy space so that uh, it consumes less memory. Um, 
I will not go beyond that because uh, unless someone is very interested in uh, and has a, such a such a taxonomy. Okay, so I think that this would be a good uh, place to stop and ask if you have any questions before I dive deeper. No. Okay. Uh, do you want to use the mic? Thank you. Uh, ju just a question about the um, range faceting. So if you're computing buckets and some kind of numeric quantity like the dates, um, I, we've worked with some other faceting systems where often it, it's like tricky to get back the zeros, like if there's some ranges that actually have no matches for the query that you have. And I'm just wondering, do you return the empty buckets as well, or? Uh, well, the current implementation uh, returns all the buckets that, so you define the buckets up front and you get a result that uh, has a count for each bucket. Yeah, it's just a convenience, but yeah. Yeah, uh, we don't filter out those buckets. Um, I don't see why. I mean, it, it depends on your uh, user interface. You could filter them out later. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Um, what we do filter out is not for the range facets, it's categories that didn't match uh, in this result set. We don't return them with count zero. That would just be silly. Um, but if you specified buckets up front, then you get the buckets back. OK, thanks. OK, so um, let's uh, look what's underneath it. And there are, um, uh, I'm not going to show you bits, uh, bitwise operations, so you can relax. Um, I just want to explain why we do certain things the way we do. Okay, so the taxonomy index, um, uh, remember that uh, uh, I said that there are two modes, uh, a sorted set-based approach and a taxonomy index-based uh, indexing approach. Uh, the taxonomy index is like a very smart map from a, a string to an integer. What it does is it takes a category, which is a, a path separated uh, by, by some separator, uh, and it assigns integer codes. Uh, we then use those integer codes in the search index so that aggregation would be uh, uh, done on integers, uh, sorting is done on integers, and everything is more efficient that way. So it's just a very smart map, which happens to be also persisted. Um, and uh, we found out that uh, implementing it over Lucene index is very simple and very efficient. And uh, usually the taxonomy index is very, very small compared to your content index, even you have, if you have large taxonomies. Um, and uh, it provides uh, some taxonomy browsing services. So you can ask for, uh, give me all the children of a certain node in the taxonomy, uh, ask who is the parent of a node in the taxonomy, etc. cetera. Um, when, you, uh, when you index a category like uh, date 2012 March 20, it's broken down to its, to its uh, path components, and each path component is assigned uh, such an integer code. So date would be assigned one, and uh, all the way through four. Now, if you think about how uh, we model the taxonomy, then it's uh, uh, it looks somewhat somewhat similar to what uh, what's displayed in the picture, uh, and it's just a very uh, it's a normal representation of a tree. Um, uh, very efficient one, which uses uh, currently parallel integer arrays uh, to uh, to help you uh, to let you browse the taxonomy and um, uh, compute uh, the top k facets uh, very efficiently. Um, that that it manage, uh, manages a sidecar index gives us um, uh, two benefits. One of them is, uh, as I said, persistency. We can commit to it. Um, and we have NRT support on, uh, over it. So it just goes hand in hand with your uh, search index. Uh, what it does complicate uh, some things is in, uh, um, I, I think that Solar and also Elasticsearch are not built currently for uh, managing two indexes. Uh, so that replication, for example, and whoever attended my talk yesterday on, replica on the replicator module, I managed how we do the replication on those two uh, indices. Uh, it requires some special support because now it's not a single index, now it's two indexes and maybe uh, some other data structures that you want to associate uh, with the search index and um, it's currently uh, impossible or very hard to do uh, in, uh, in those uh, infrastructures. I, I, and I know some people uh, are afraid of managing two indices, even though I have no idea why, uh, but, um, but I know that uh, 
if there is a downside, then that would be it. Uh, in the search index, uh, so remember that the taxonomy index maps the categories into integer, integer codes. Uh, and I said that we add two types of fields to the documents. Uh, one of them is the drill down terms. So if you index the category day 2012, March 20, then we add four drill down terms to it, one at each level. Uh, and also uh, we use uh, a binary doc values field uh, to encode all the integer codes that this document is associated with. So at search time, uh, we just go over a single uh, binary dog values feed and aggregate the, the integers that we find uh, there. Um, and uh, this is a very uh, fast approach. So we've experimented with, for example, uh, indexing a separate field per dimension, because you could think uh, I have a day dimension, an author dimension, maybe a price dimension, and whatever. And uh, why, why stuff all of them into the same uh, field versus stuffing the um, each of them into a, uh, a different field. So it turns out that um, indexing them in a single binary dog values field is very efficient because uh, you get uh, locality uh, of reference uh, in, the, in the CPU. Um, uh, everything is uh, indexed together. You don't need to, um, to jump between, uh, between uh, different uh, uh, lists. And uh, uh, so we tried it, it wasn't uh, uh, um, it didn't yield any any uh, improvements. Um, we also uh, encode those integers as uh, vint encoding uh, plus uh, a decap um, um, encoding. And uh, here too, uh, immediately after we uh, contributed it to the scene, people said we should use pectins. So we tried that. We uh, there is an open issue. Uh, we tried. I think uh, the best of minds. Uh, wrote different encoders, like seven or eight versions of encoders, and none of them beat uh, the, the vint encoding, which is surprising <coughs> uh, on one hand, but not very surprising if you think about the data. Uh, the, the way the data looks, um, those are like random integers that you draw. So the chances that uh, any bit packing encoding would actually be able to yield any significant uh, results and encode them e efficiently is not very likely. And variable int encoding is uh, is actually very fast to decode in this uh, in this scheme. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, we also uh, uh, offer. Uh, I mean, we so so this is a binary dog values field. Now you can um, you can because it's a dog values. You can use uh, a direct dog values format, which is new. Will become will be out in Lucene four six. Uh, to load it into memory, so if you can afford the memory and you want to speed up your uh, faceted search, uh, then you can do that. Uh, and there is also uh, um, like a super direct um, dog values format, which we just uh, save the raw integers in memory. So we don't do any decoding during search time, which bumps up the search performance even more. Uh, so you get, uh, I mean, it's, it's like a standard Lucene practice. Uh, we give you the tools, uh, and you decide which of them works best for, you, for your application. Um, OK, so sorted set, set facets, uh, as I mentioned, they uh, utilize the sorted set dog values field. Um, and uh, I don't know how, if you know how sorted set dog values field works, uh, but you add uh, a, a new sorted set dog values field to a document. Underneath the covers, uh, Lucene um, translates those strings into ordinals, which are again integer codes. And every operation done is done on the integer code, and only when you need to uh, label an ordinal, then uh, we go and uh, find uh, this ordinal in the respective uh, dictionary to return you the, the actual uh, string that was, uh, that was its uh, translation. Uh, it has some advantages, as I mentioned. Um, it doesn't use a sidecar index. Um, um, it takes uh, less RAM to represent a taxonomy, and the reason is because it's a flat taxonomy. Uh, so you don't need to represent a general tree. You just need to, to know for each, um, uh, for each dimension who are the children, and uh, there is a very efficient encoding for that. Um, it tie breaks by uh, label sort order, and this is... Uh, I'm still having uh, debates whether it's uh, uh, an advantage or not, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in the taxonomy-based approach, uh, if you have two categories which were counted uh, the same, uh, 
then the one that was indexed first wins. Uh, whereas in the sorted set uh, facet, uh, the counts are uh, the ties are, are broken by the, the lexical order of the of the string. Whether users care about it, I don't know, but that's uh, that's a, that is a difference. Um, now there are some di disadvantages to it. First of all, it's uh, it's slower than facets uh, than the taxonomy based approach. Um, it's not a full taxonomy, so it doesn't support support full hierarchy. So if that is your case, uh, you cannot use it. And uh, overall, uh, especially if uh, your taxonomy is not built in a very special manner, like you know upfront all of the values that you're going to see in the taxonomy, it will use more more RAM because what it needs to do, um, it needs to map local ordinals per segment uh, to global ordinals uh, over the the entire index. And those maps are held per segment. So if you have a one million nodes taxonomy, um, you could end up keeping those um, those large maps in, in each segment. And overall, you will accumulate more RAM than than you than you would have uh, used in the taxonomy based approach. Um, and because of those local to uh, to global ordinal maps, uh, it is uh, I said it's uh, it had some uh, some cost to an artery open because now we need to. Um, compute uh, these segment ordinals and map them to the global ones. Okay, um, so I'm saying that uh, local ordinals are not very good, and um, so let's talk about why global ordinals are, are very good. Um, so the problem is that you added uh, the category, um, let's say, author shy to uh, a bunch of documents and together with other categories. Now in the first segment, it was added, let's say number three, and it received ordinal three. And in the second segment, it was added as, uh, and received ordinal 17. Uh, if you use local ordinals, then you can count in the first segment, um, the ordinal three, and you know how many documents uh, contribute to that ordinal, but now you want to merge across segments and you need to know that three and 17 actually means the same category. Okay, so this is the global, the local to global ordinal map. Um, with the with the uh, global ordinals, you don't need to do that because the author shy receives the same ordinal across all segments because there is a, a sidecar structure which we call the taxonomy index, which is responsible for um, generating the IDs for these categories. Uh, so you don't need. So first of all, you save this map. Second, you save the uh, the RAM consumption. Uh, because you don't need a local to global ordinal mapping, which again saves, um, uh, I believe it also affects uh, the locality of reference in the CPU because now you load different structures into the CPU versus uh, just loading a single array that you can just count. Um, if you don't want to use local ordinals, uh, then you would do, uh, you would resolve um, uh, cut counts on the string representation, which is even worse than, so you, you don't even want to do that. Um, okay, um, the aggregation uh, is done in a single array. So we have one array, and this is where partitions might come in useful if you have uh, a very large taxonomy. We have an array that is the size of the taxonomy, and every ordinal that we meet in the binary dog values field, we just increment the count uh, in that entry of the array. Uh, now, if you have a very large array, then you might want to break it down. But um, aggregation is very uh, efficient that way. Uh, there is a downside to global ordinals. So uh, I don't know if you uh, are familiar with this API, indexwriter.endindexes. But let's say that you have a job that generates in an index on the side, and then it wants to merge it with the master index or the larger index. Uh, then the, the way to do that in Lucene is to call indexwriter.addindexes. What it does underneath the covers, it just reads the segments and add them to the, to the new index. With global ordinals, though, we cannot do that. Uh, it's not, it cannot be done that efficiently. We have to map the ordinals that are encoded in the input index to match the ones that are encoded in the master index. So the, this operation is a little bit more costly. Um, and well, I just want to, to you, you to be aware of that. Um, okay, another aspect of how we do faceted search is we do it in two phase uh, uh, tasks. So when uh, the facets collector is invoked, 
it first computes um, uh, aggregates the matching documents for this for each segment and then in a second pass it computes the, the counts now the first question that was asked is why not do this on the fly so if you have a collector which uh, which is given a document that is a match for the query why you don't go immediately to the binary dog values field and aggregate all the categories that are there why do you need to accumulate stuff in a fixed bit set um, and then later on in a second pass go over the bit set so we tried it we uh, performance tested it and uh, and it wasn't that good um, so um, we, we we cannot explain it besides the fact that again we s might lose some locality of reference because what happens is that when you are executing the query um, there are many structures that are being loaded into into the CPU cache and uh, they are already overloading the CPU cache with information now we bring in another structure the, the counting list where all the ordinals are, are encoded and everything me is uh, is messed up now so at least if we are only aggregating a bit set which uh, has a very low memory footprint footprint then uh, we have better chances and perhaps this is uh, why the performance isn't that great uh, when you're trying to do it on the fly uh, that we don't uh, trash the CPU cache um, and uh, and when we do it afterwards then we are only all, all the CPU is allocated for us to do the counting. So whatever we want to load into there, or whatever the JVM loads in there, uh, stays there and does not get uh, swapped out. So that is our best explanation. Uh, of course, we didn't. We don't know exactly why. Uh, so we tried it, and eventually we didn't uh, do that. But um, two-phase aggregation is also very useful for doing sampling. So if you want to sample. So again, you, you have uh, hundreds of millions of results and you decided that faceted search on them is expensive and you want to do faceted search on a sample set of documents. If you're going to count on the fly, how do you know whether to count this document or not? If you just flip a coin, um, then you might not eventually uh, count um, the percentage that you wanted to count. Okay, because just deciding that 10% of the times you're counting a document and 10% you don't, you, you might lose some. But uh, if we are, if you're doing it in a second phase, you can make more intelligent decisions um, about which documents uh, you sample and which which you don't. Um, and so it's it plays better um, that way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> There is an object which um, uh, it's called the facet indexing params. It's like a schema for indexing facets, and uh, it controls a bunch of uh, of stuff. First of all, it tells, um, and this is a, an indexing time decision. You cannot change it. Uh, facet indexing params are uh, very difficult to to change. I mean, it, you cannot change them after you decided that this is how you're going to index facets. You you don't want to change them uh, unless you are willing to re-index stuff. Um, so first of all, the partition size. If you know that your dimension is huge, you want to se to specify uh, uh, what is the size of the partition for each uh, dimension, because that means how much memory we will allocate for you later on. So you want to specify that. Um, if for some reason the delimiter, which is 001F, uh, you expect it to appear in your categories, uh, and you cannot use it as a delimiter, then you can override it. But that you that you won't have this um, and um, you can specify for each dimension uh, what we call the category list params which uh, let you control how uh, you encode facets um, so this is not like a codec but uh, it is very similar in nature so again if you know that every document is going to be associated with 200 unique facets um, that are probably will uh, get successive ordinal or integer codes then you can plug in an encoder that we allow you to um, uh, to encode the, a single bit per ordinal or something like that, um, and and you can gain some speed later on the decoding. This is not something that you would want to change uh, on a general use case. It's only if you really really know um, the type of facets and the way you index them. Um, what you might want to change is the ordinal policy, and remember that I said that. For uh, uh, a facet that uh, uh, is a leaf in a deep hierarchy, we index all the parents. We add all the parents to the document as integers. 
Um, this consumes um, more disk space, uh, and it, it also uh, affects the, the the running time. But it does allow you to index multiple values of the same hierarchy in the same document. If you know that you are not going to do that, then you might want to change the ordinal policy to no parents, which means index only the leaf node, and at runtime we resolve the counts to uh, all the parents in the tree. The default is uh, what we call all by dimension, which means uh, the parent is never added. Um, and therefore, if you will ask to count the author um, dimension, then you won't get the count of the author category itself, which in most cases you don't want to, uh, which is good because that's, that's how we save an integer. Um, I promised no bits. I didn't promise no integers. Um, now, uh, category list params uh, are uh, currently imp implemented over a binary dog values field. Um, you can try to uh, modify that by indexing ordinals into a numeric dog values field, uh, even though it's limited to a single long, and then you might want to, uh, to override a bunch of, uh, of stuff um, along the way. Our experiments didn't show that it improves uh, the performance. Um, Okay, if um, uh, the category list params uh, also serve as another optimization, so if you, have, if you index uh, 20 different dimensions in documents, but your user interface uh, only displays subsets of them, depending on the user, on the screen that is being shown, um, then you can decide to uh, separate the different dimensions into different lists, because uh, that that in each list we uh, encode all the ordinal or all the all the integer codes. Uh, it means that we also aggregate them. Now it would be a waste of work if we aggregated 20 dimensions, but you only are going to display five of them. So if that is your use case, uh, again for each document you index many dimensions, but you don't show all of them in the same screens. Then you might want to change the. Uh, into into which category list each dimension goes. So that is uh, um, the category list params is uh, is the way to do that. Uh, now, as I said before, the facet indexing params are not per segment; they are global to the index. You cannot change them after you've decided upon a schema, um, and um, um, that is a, a current limitation of uh, of the module. Even though uh, in practice it's uh, rarely changed. Um, so, but just, you know, be aware of it. Uh, okay, so I see that um, I, yeah, I have some time for uh, taking questions. I don't know how much, uh, one or two minutes. <coughs> nope. I'll ask another one. I yeah. also have some questions, so um, I'll, I'll, I hope someone else will come after me. But the... Um, yeah, I, I wanted to take you back to when you talked about drill sideways. Mm -hmm. So you, you pick um, a facet, and then you still get counts for all the other facets, even if they don't match after you've. What if you, is it possible? I know you, you mentioned previously you can select like two facets, so you could have like, I don't know, is that something you can do in the UI? Like if I had, instead of the user selecting a facet one at a time, if they have check boxes, let's say, so they can do a matches either facet. Yeah. So that is uh, what the drill down query supports. Um, in this UI, by the way, if you hold down shift and you click on facets, then that's, uh, first of all, selecting multiple facets is a, it's a UI thing. Yeah. Uh, on the Java side of the things, we let you pass, um, when you're adding a category pass, then you can instead add uh, a, uh, an array of category passes, and then we OR between them. And so if you do that and you're doing drill sideways, do you remove both facets when you compute the yeah. counts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we remove all the facets within that level so that we comp can compute the upper levels, uh, as well as other facets within the same level. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder about the two-stage face uh, counting. Mm -hmm. was an introduction part. <laughs> no. Don't you think that we will have some uh, the same performance gain if we will just buffer, just allocate limited buffer and put uh, some few of search results in it and then call facet counting for this buffer? 
and then runs collecting the, something like that to limit memory consumption. What is the, um, uh, what do you mean by buffering? I mean, a fixed bit set is, is, is a buffer or you're talking about uh, the uh, but more? But fixed bit set is something like unlimited bu buffer to me, it's too huge. But if I allocate oh, okay, do document number in some array list and just reuse this array list, it's limited to a few kilos yeah. of elements. Yeah, so um, one of the uh, works that uh, we've done here is to remove abstractions from the API. Uh, so at first, the API was entirely abstract. Uh, you could implement things however you wanted. So for example, if for each segment we returned an iterator over a doc ID set iterator, then you could implement a sparse iterator or over a bit set iterator, right? Which is, if I understand correctly, that is what you, you're asking. Um, uh, if you could represent the matching documents in a more efficient structure, which is, uh, it's not a bit set, but it's uh, it's a different structure, it's a more optimized one. Okay. Uh, so if um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, uh, but we first need to measure the cost of the abstractions here, because the abstractions uh, were uh, responsible for about 30% of the performance loss. Just the fact that you have. Uh, classes that abstract away, uh, and this is a lesson that uh, that we've learned that sometimes, especially when you take the object-oriented programming course in the university, they they uh, uh, teach you to implement objects and um, overloading, etc. Um, but in in a very hot spot code, uh, such as is done here, uh, sometimes those abstra abstractions really hurt performance. JIT does not always kick uh, kicks in. Um, and um, we are we have an issue now that uh, we want to abstract away the fact that the taxonomy is held in parallel integer arrays. We are trying other uh, encoding uh, schemes, and by just adding um, a layer on top of the array, so be, instead of iterating over an array, you get an iterator. This already loses 10%, um, and uh, underneath it's still accessing the array. So. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, um, it's just that uh, my experience with this uh, module so far and this work is that every time we added an abstraction back, we, we lost some in performance, and not necessarily we gain back when we will move, for example, to a sparse doc ID set encoding. Um, okay, so. Okay, so thanks, and you can go to lunch now.